question I get all the time is how do some great improvisational guitar players improvise gorgeous melodies and intertwine the vocal melody of the song live in concert? It's actually an easy task to do and we're going to discuss how it's done, but we're also going to show you how to kind of do some variations of it and how this kind of thought process can really make your solos shine. So we're gonna get right down to it. The song that we're gonna to use today is going to be Knocking on Heaven's Door. The reason being is that there are so many different versions of uh, guitar players playing the song. I'm sure you have your own version. Uh, everyone kind of knows the melody. It's a simple melody and I'll show you how you can expand on it. Once you have this down, you'll be able to do it to any song you wish. All right, so let's look at Knocking on Heaven's Door and how do we solo Improvise, sound great, sound cool, calm, collected, and also bring in that emotion of the vocal melody. Let's take a look, look at the chords. The chords are G, D, A minor, but boom, boom, pa, to G, D, and a C chord. And that's it, over and over again. Now, this vocal melody is simple, has a lot of space, which is good for us guitar players. And so let's, let's, let's see how this is done. How do we incorporate the vocal melody? The answer is so simple, you're gonna roll your eyes and turn off the video. And the answer is, you have to, have to, learn the vocal melody first and concrete it, cure it, know it, all right? That is the answer. A lot of people think that people improvise and then kind of like weave into the vocal melody, but that's not what's happening. The vocal melody is always there and we're playing around it. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's figure this out. What is the melody, the vocal melody? And the way you want to figure this stuff out, it's actually easy, so don't panic. Uh, nine times out of 10, the notes of the vocals are inside the chords. So let's see. Um, da -da. Uh, B, open B. So that's, a G chord is G, B, and D, so. Mama, take this. Uh, there it is. The first, first note I figured out, right? There's the D chord, there's the note. So, Mama, take this badge from me. And I know it goes back here, I can hear it. And that note is in the A minor chord. I might be moving fast, but if you sit and hum this stuff out and realize that the vocals are definitely inside those chords, uh, you know, that, that should help ease your mind. So we have, let's see. Mama, take this bench from me. Okay, and that's on the A minor. Da, da, da. Boom. Same thing. I can't use it anymore. Okay. More, bum, bum. And that's in the C chord. So I think I have a melody. Let's see. That's kind of the whole verse. It's getting dark to dark to see. Yeah, okay. Now, that's the whole thing. Let's get to the chorus. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Okay, pretty much the same thing, right? Like, knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Boom, ba ba, boom, ba ba, da boom. Knock, 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 knocking on heaven's door. It's all the same notes, just a little bit of different rhythm. Now, once you have that down, okay, once you have it down, the most important thing is to move it into soloing area, all right? And so I'm gonna solo in the 12th fret. If you want, you know, you want, might wanna find it out in the 12th fret, you might wanna find it out seventh fret area, you wanna move it around. You're not gonna be soloing down here all the time. So here's an octave higher, right? Let's see, even here. Um, All right, so you want to learn it and cure it wherever you think you're going to be soloing. Uh, if you want to do it all over the guitar neck, it's up to you. But this is the answer here. And I'm going to show you, you can have a lot of fun with this. We're going to get really good with our soloing in a couple seconds. But knowing this, this is what it is. The guitar players are not, you know, improvising and getting into the melody. 
they are improvising knowing exactly where that melody is. And so how do I do that? Well, I have a backing track. What I'm gonna do is I'm just, I'm just gonna play that melody over it. And what we're gonna hear is we wanna hear how much space there is. So the first thing we're gonna do is just play the vocal melody and let's listen to all the space that this has to offer. Even though this isn't the answer, you're gonna need to know what scales to use. Well, we have G, D, and C, and G, D, and A minor, excuse me, that's the key of G. We're looking at the G major scale, we're looking at the G major pentatonic. That's our roadmap, okay? That is our roadmap. And now what we wanna do is we wanna take that roadmap and put it to use. And we're gonna use uh, the train analogy. The train analogy is a really simple analogy that helps you kinda of nail this. Picture having a train going down the track, 80 miles an hour, seven cars long, not you know, not stopping, cruising perfectly like on cruise control, and that is your uh, vocal melody. It is sure, it is there, it's constantly moving. And now picture a train right next to it on a parallel track, same exact train, same exact number of cars moving at the same exact speed. That is your improvisational train. The theory is, is you could hop up on the roof of of the of the vocal melody train and walk a little bit, and when you wanna jump onto the improv train, you can, and you can kinda of walk down the improv train, and when it's time to get back to the vocal melody train, you can easily jump right back to the vocal melody because they're both moving down the tracks. This mindset is gonna help you improvise, and we're gonna do some variations of it, but what we're gonna do now is very simple. We're gonna play the vocal melody, and then I'm going, when the vocal melody stops, and there's no vocal melody, I'm gonna hop on the improvisational track with my G major scale. I'm gonna fill in the time until it comes back to the vocal melody. Let's see what it sounds like. You can hear this, ready? So right there, I was using the space of the vocal melody to hop on to the other train where the party was. And then when the vocal melody needed to come back, I came back to the vocal melody. All right, what other options do we have here? Well, there are several. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to hop on the vocal melody train, but we're going to jump to the improvisational train before the melody ends. And this is really cool. You start off with the vocal melody, and then you get into your improvisation and you can come back whenever you want. The idea here is we're not waiting for the vocal melody to end. We're gonna play a little bit of it and then go jump onto the improv train. And then at any point in time, we can get back to the uh, melody. Okay, so the first one was taking advantage of the spaces. This is about playing the vocal melody, then jumping over and continuing improving and jumping back to the vocal melody whenever you see fit. Check it out. So right there, you could hear I was kind of going back and forth between the, mel the vocal melody train and the improv train. Another way you can do this is you could now, t you know, start off on the, on the vocal melody train for a very short bit, jump onto the improv train, and now look over, just look over at the uh, vocal melody train. And all you have to do now is make sure that your rhythms or where the cars connect are in the same place. And what I mean by that is you're gonna use the rhythm of the vocal melody in your improvisation to kind of stay connected to both trains. Listen to how I'm gonna start off with a vocal melody, then I'm gonna get into improv mode, but my improvisation is gonna be built around the rhythm of the vocal melody. All right, here we go. 
one was me kind of improvising and paying attention to the rhythm of it. Now, you can do this with any song you see fit. It's really, really cool. And the, the answer to developing a melodic, well thought out solo when improvising that really retains the original like message of the song is to learn that vocal melody first find out what scale or pattern you need to um, fill in the spaces or improvise against, and then play. And when you listen now to your favorite um, guitar players that introduce vocal melodies on any songs, you're gonna you're gonna hear this clearly. Um, on Patreon, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it with a totally different song, kind of regroove it, and you're gonna learn. And you're gonna watch me figure out the melody. I have not figured out the melody yet. You're gonna watch me suffer on it. And so, if you want to practice this stuff and see how it works in different situations, come check me out on Patreon. And of course, uh, I do need to mention, uh, depending on when you're watching this video, they there might be a link below uh, that is a GoFundMe for my friend and uh, neighbor Matt. Uh, he needs our help. Uh, the video is linked below. Uh, if you're interested in, in watching that, please do watch that and help uh, help someone out who's who's a good man. And with that being said, thank you so much for being here. Vocal melody improvisation really is about learning the vocal melody and then improv improvising around it. I'll stop talking. Check out the Patreon practice sessions if you wish. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Thank you.